Hi, my name is Andon Forget, and I wanted to share some of the exciting things that we have um, we've been doing at Portage Bay Solutions. Things like pivot tables and cross tabs have always been difficult to compose and create in FileMaker, but with a little bit of magic from JavaScript, we have been able to mix in a bit of FileMaker and do some pretty exciting things. We've been revising this process to make it as easy as possible. Using JavaScript to display pivot tables in FileMaker allows you to take a large array of data and create some spectacular and interactive pivot tables. The JavaScript library we're using is called pivottable.js and is written by Nicholas Crutchin. We start with a standard FileMaker layout where we have added a pivot table creation tool. Once the initial modifications have been made to a FileMaker file by adding scripts and a couple of table occurrences, the pivot table tool can be dropped on any layout. Opening the tool allows you to easily collect and rename the fields from the layout that you want in the pivot table. It also provides you the ability to save those settings for next time. By selecting the chart I want to create in the data set, I can select the fields from the layout, transfer them over, and rename them. And that's what I've done here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this data set. Um, before I go there, I want to point out this is U.S. births per day, 1994 to 2014. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look at it. So now we're in the pivot table and we're looking at the data from some of the previous formats that I'd saved. But let me walk it back just a little bit, show you how it looks when you first bring your data in. So I'm going to go back to a default state. This is normally how it looks the very first time you pull the data in. You can see the different fields that we pulled across are in a holding area. They're either at the top or the side. And we can open those up and see all of the different portions of the data and the number of records. And we can filter those if we want. We can also pick up the fields and lay them either in the top or the side panel. And depending on which side you load it into, we'll create columns or rows based on that information. So if I put year on the column, day in the row, now you can see we've got year by the day of the week. and Currently, our data is displaying a count of the records. So there were 52 Mondays in 1994 for our record set. Um, we actually want to look at births for this data set. So I'm going to do, I'm going to change the way that we're aggregating the data. So I, by selecting this pull down, I'm going to do an integer summary of the number of births because that was one of the fields we passed over. So now it quickly s aggregates the data for us. And you can see now we've got year down the side, day of the week across the top. And the fun part about this is once your data is in a pivot table, you can start to see patterns and variations. Right off the bat, I can see that Saturdays and Sundays in our data set had significantly lower birth rates, which is kind of fun. And if I pull the date out and I put the month in, we can see other patterns. Um, and just so you know, we're using a heat map view. We can change the, the view so we can do a row heat map. We can do a column heat map. We can do line charts, bar charts, stacked bar charts. I'll get into those in just a second. But in our standard heat map, you can see we have, for February, we have a lot less births than we do in August. And specifically, August 2008 was a really high time. Now, I know February is low because there's less days in February, but I'm not sure about August, and I'm not sure why August is so high. But it's some interesting things and it's some trends in the data that you might not be able to pick out just by looking at it. The fun part about this being a pivot table is we can also pull down other fields. So I can pull down day and I can put it in front of month, or I can pull down day and put it in front of year. And all we're doing is we're cross-tabbing or pivoting the data and the way that it's being displayed. Um, I kind of like this. I can see some statistics about the days per month per year. So I'm going to save this. And we've added some features that allow you to save the pivot table once you've created it the way that you like it. So I'll select save and I can rename it and we can call this uh, year day by month births. So kind of fun. Uh, being able to save these is pretty nice. And you can see that I've got some other pre-saved ones for the same data set. I've got births by year by month, and these are saved in a line chart. I've got births year by date, and this is the one that was uh, on the page initially. Um, with some other interesting things, you can see here we have a 
spike in birth rates in 2000, which is kind of interesting, but we've also got a decline since 2008 of birth rates. And that was representative of what we saw in the heat map as well. This is pretty exciting. We're basically loading the data from our FileMaker file into the pivot table using JSON. And the display itself is using the JavaScript libraries and is actually a web page. And so we get some of the other things like a bar chart, stack bar chart. These are all different features. Um, but if I want to, from any of the layouts, I can go ahead and also open it in a web browser. And what this does is it saves it to uh, my desktop as pivottable.html. And I could then email this to somebody. They can open it in a web browser and then they have the flexibility to manipulate it as well. They can filter the data. So let's say they didn't want to look at 1994 or 95. They can shorten up the data. They can pull the day out and put the month in. All the same things that we were doing in the other solution. The only thing they can't do is save it from here. So that's the pivot table in FileMaker. And I'd like to say thanks to 538.com for providing all of the data samples to allow putting these types of things together. And also thank you to Nicholas Crutchton, and I, like I say, I'm probably saying that incorrectly, for his incredible work on the JavaScript library pivot table.